Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Martin with section 19 of the novel 910 by Nora Raleigh Baskin. Today we are on September 11th, 2001, and we are 8.54 a.m. If you recall from our timeline, this is 10 minutes after the first plane has impacted the tower. So uh, we are in Columbus, Ohio, where school is going on as usual for Nahid, and so she's not really aware of what's going on in New York yet. Flight 77, with 58 passengers and six crew members on board, on its way to Los Angeles International Airport, deviated from its course, turning south directly over Ohio, where 35,000 feet below, Nahid was sitting in language arts class, listening to Virginia Whitworth give her book report on The Outsiders. So if you notice, this starts out with a different tone. Our story so far has put us inside the minds, the feelings, the hearts of these individual characters. But this is very factual. This is almost like a news report because this is where our author is weaving reality into this fantasy world. So be aware of that shift of tone throughout the next few sections of the book that we read because more and more fact is going to be infused into the story and the author does want you to notice when the facts are there. So the description of Flight 77 was 35,000 feet above Ohio when it made the turn. It was heading to Los Angeles. It had six crew members, 58 passengers. That's all factually accurate information. Uh, over here, you'll notice a title of the book, The Outsiders. This is what we call an illusion. We haven't really talked about illusions that much yet, but it's when a book is mentioned inside of another book. So we did have a biblical illusion a few sections back. That pops up periodically. The idea that an author is going to make a reference to a different book or poem or story inside of their own story. Um, and that's called an illusion. Let's continue. Oh, I read that book, Nahid whispered to no one in particular. I loved it. But then Nahid hardly heard the rest of Virginia's report. She was working out in her mind what she was going to say to Eliza and how she could make things better. Instinctually, she reached up to pull down her headband and adjust her veil. It was her thinking cap. So we'll remember that Nahid's mother called it the thinking cap, okay? Uh, it's supposed to remind Nahid of all of the values that her family has raised her with. That idea that she's supposed to be kind and thoughtful and considerate of others. Nahid knew she'd never get everyone to stop teasing Eliza, but she herself could be nicer. She could be a friend to her and maybe that would help. It was the right thing to do, and the truth was nobody was going to stop being Nahid's friend just because she was Eliza's friend, she hoped. The bell rang as Virginia was finishing, but the teacher made everyone wait until she had given the homework for tomorrow, which meant they all had 25 seconds less to get to their next class. Today was Tuesday, and it was a B week, which meant a double period of science, which meant Nahid could start implementing her making amends plan right away. Eliza would be in class. Today, Nahid had taken her science book with her so she would be on time. But when she got there, nothing looked right. A bunch of kids were bouncing around. Some were standing at the back of the room, but no one was sitting down. It was like the lunchroom on a Friday afternoon before vacation when the cafeteria monitors weren't paying attention. In the far corner, the television was on, and Mrs. Salinger was staring at it with her back to the classroom. Sure, sometimes they watched videos in science, but today they were supposed to continue working on their theories and experiments. And since when did Mrs. Salinger let things get so out of control? She didn't even turn around to yell at the boys who were playing with the Bunsen burners. Eliza was standing at their desk, facing the wrong way, toward the back of the room, not moving. Nahid had never seen her so still and so quiet. A few more kids went to stand next to Mrs. Salinger and stare at the TV, but Mrs. Salinger didn't seem to notice anything but the screen. This wasn't like her at all. 
It looked as if the television was turned to a news channel. The CNN Live logo was stamped across the bottom, but that was all Nahid could see. She always hated the news. Why was everyone watching it, and why were they being so quiet about it? But now was as good a time as any to talk to Eliza with all this freedom, with nobody paying attention. Hey, Eliza, can I talk to you for a minute? Nahid started. She might not get another chance. Something terrible has happened, Eliza said. She looked upset, but then again, Eliza got frantic for her pencils weren't lined up. I know, Nahid said, and about that, I am so sorry. So why don't I make it up to you and you sit with me, with us, at lunch today? Eliza took her eyes away from the television. Really? Her face brightened. Nahid nodded. Hey, that was easy, and it actually felt good. Really, she said. Okay, that's enough. Everyone back to their seats, Mrs. Salinger suddenly yelled out. Nahid looked around the room. Mrs. Salinger had turned off the television, but the kids who had been watching didn't move. Something was wrong. Maybe that's what Eliza had meant when she said something terrible had happened. She had been watching the news. Now, Nahid felt silly, but when she turned to ask Eliza what had happened, Mrs. Salinger preempted her. No more talking, she ordered. Take out your work. This has nothing to do with us. What didn't? Mrs. Salinger repeated it, as if trying to convince herself. This has nothing to do with us. So, at this point, if you look at the timestamp, we've had one plane impact the tower, right? We know that happened at 844. So by this point in time, the news media had picked up uh, what was going on. And so this is very obviously what they're watching. The CNN Live logo was stamped across the bottom of the screen. And Eliza had watched enough to know that something terrible had happened. But remember, in the very beginning, nobody knew this was a terrorist attack. What we thought was that this was a one-off accident, that something hit the tower, but it was, you know, a freak mistake. And I will tell you that the first uh, news I heard of this, because I was teaching at the time, was a secretary came and told me that a plane had accidentally hit the towers. And that is really what people believed in that moment. It really wasn't until the second plane hit that people began to understand, oh, this wasn't an accident. This is an attack. So when Mrs. Salinger says this has nothing to do with us, that's not a lack of patriotism. It's not her, you know, having some denial about reality. It really is just that she saw the accident or what she thought was an accident and said, okay, you know what? That's in New York. We're in Columbus, Ohio. So let's move on with our day. You know, um, sometimes adults have to do that. They compartmentalize the bad news and uh, deal with it when it's a little more convenient and push through the things that they have to do as a responsibility. So this was her way of really trying to maintain calm and control, especially since she knows she wasn't the only one who saw the news. She had students standing around her watching as well. So that takes care of section 19. We'll be back for section 20.